Stars, once brilliant beacons of hope, have dwindled to embers, their warmth a fading memory. In the abyss of space, silence reigns, broken only by the mournful sigh of a dying cosmos. This, my friends, is the inevitable heat death. For decades, we've basked in the glow of existence, oblivious to the ticking clock of eternity. For the laws of physics are unforgiving, the fire that ignited our universe is slowly fading. Galaxies will crumble, stars will devour themselves, and black holes, those cosmic graveyards, will become the only monuments to a universe that once thrived. Is this our fate? Join me on this journey as we explore the inevitable heat death. The universe will run down to a point where there is no more thermodynamic free energy to support motion or life, a condition known as heat death. Physically speaking, its entropy will have reached its maximum. The theory of universal heat death is based on the theories proposed by William Thompson, aka Lord Kelvin, who extended the theory of heat, which is represented by the first and second laws of thermodynamics, to encompass mechanical energy loss in nature in the 1850s. The concept of heat death originates, which states that entropy is likely to increase in an isolated system. If the universe exists long enough, it will eventually get to a stage where all energy will have been evenly distributed. To put it another way, nature tends to use the mechanical energy or motion to dissipate. Consequently, extrapolating from this, there is the belief that the universe's mechanical movement will eventually run out due to the second law. William Thompson emphasized the mechanical energy loss theories of Sadie Carnot, James Joule, and Rudolf Clasius, where they explained the theory of heat death in 1851. During the next 10 years, William Rankin and Hermann von Helmholtz further expounded on Thompson's ideas. More specifically, William Thompson presented the theory in 1851 that heat is a dynamic type of mechanical action rather than a substance. We believe that heat and mechanical effort must be equivalent, just like cause and effect. The second rule of thermodynamics, which states the mechanical motion and the energy required to create it will tend to dissipate or run down, was first presented by Thompson in his 1852 publication on a universal tendency in nature to the dissipation of mechanical energy. That's not all. The concepts presented in this paper, as they applied to the dynamics of the universal operation and the age of the sun, drew the attention of scholars such as Hermann von Helmholtz and William Rankin, who were reported to have discussed the topic together. In 1862, Thompson published the paper On the Age of the Sun's Heat, in which he restated his core convictions regarding the universal dissipation of energy, the second law, and the indestructibility of energy, the first law, which ultimately led to the diffusion of heat, motionlessness, and exhaustion of potential energy throughout the material universe. He also clarified his perspective regarding the implications for the universe as a whole. If the cosmos were limited and permitted to follow its current laws, he claimed, the outcome would unavoidably be a condition of universal stillness and death. However, the amount of matter in the universe cannot be imagined to have an end. Rather, science indicates an unending progression over infinite space, where potential energy is converted into tangible motion and ultimately into heat. This process results in a single, limited mechanism that runs like a clock and never stops. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you won't miss up and coming videos. Following the publication of Thompson's 1852 and 1865 papers, Helmholtz and Rankin both asserted credit for the concept. However, upon closer inspection, they revealed that Thompson had believed the universe would end in thermal equilibrium and this would be the end of all physical occurrences. The universe's temperature would be extremely close to zero during heat death. Though the outcome is similar, cold death, sometimes known as the Big Freeze, occurs when the cosmos gets too cold to support life because of ongoing expansion but it is not the same as heat death. According to inflationary cosmology, energy was uniformly distributed in the early universe prior to cosmic expansion, which means that the universe was essentially in a situation akin to thermal equilibrium. In actuality, the two occurrences are incredibly different. While in a state where most matter has collapsed into black holes, entropy in a gravitational attraction is very low if energy is equally diffused. In addition, Gravity was a significant force in the early cosmos. Because the system is thermodynamically unstable, such a state is not in thermal equilibrium and, in reality, does not exist. 
A state of uniform energy distribution is a heat death state, or the state of a supreme entropy, because in the heat death scenario, the energy density is so low that the system can be considered non-gravitational. Now, let's go to the question we've all been waiting for. If heat death occurs, what would happen to the universe? The universe's final state is determined by speculations made regarding its ultimate fate, which has changed significantly in the late 20th and early 21st centuries. A heat death is predicted in a closed universe that undergoes recollapse when the collapse approaches its end, and the universe reaches an uncontrollably high temperature and maximum entropy. Heat death is also anticipated in an open or flat universe that expands endlessly. Throughout this extremely long length of time, the cosmos cools to near absolute temperature and moves closer to a condition of maximal entropy. It has been suggested that an expanding universe the value of uttermost entropy rises faster than the cosmos gains entropy, causing the Earth to move gradually farther away from heat death. According to scientific consensus, as of 2007, the universe will keep expanding forever. It is hypothetical and, again, dependent on assumptions as to what extent human life might survive in a cosmos on the verge of thermal collapse. It has been suggested that sufficient usable energy exists in a collapsing universe to carry out an indefinitely vast amount of computation prior to the collapse's completion. A society that engages in whole brain emulation can experience an indefinitely long period of subjective time in virtual worlds, according to a situation known as the Omega Point. The final anthropic principle is the idea that, in an expanding universe, there would be some mechanism that would enable sentient life to carry on processing information indefinitely. They are getting closer to knowing the future and ultimate fate of the cosmos by putting together an ever-increasing number of hints. And the news, I fear, is not good. Black holes will gradually take control and eventually melt into nothingness, causing star formation to end. A big rip may be around the corner. However, a variety of strange events may occur, so things start to look good for those who don't mind waiting another 101,050 years or so. However, Let's begin with what we know about the past and present before moving on to random events in the far future. We are still able to explore the universe's past of evolution because astronomy and archaeology are comparable in several ways. This finding, along with Einstein's general theory of relativity, suggests that the universe began with a big bang and has been expanding ever since, even if it is just one piece of evidence among many. Measuring the universe's deceleration rate was one of the most critical problems in modern cosmology towards the end of the 20th century. It was believed that the mass seen in the universe might eventually be sufficient to force the expansion to contract. Amazingly, scientists from two separate teams discovered the exact opposite. The universe was expanding faster than ever before, not slower. In 2011, this vital finding earned the Nobel Prize in Physics. It is still difficult to comprehend its ramifications though, the cosmos must be filled with some material that exerts a repulsive gravity or negative pressure as one way to conceptualize the speeding universe. This is referred to as dark energy. Although this may seem extreme, separate experiments have been carried out to support the presence of dark energy and the acceleration of the cosmos. They have not only discovered that the acceleration is occurring, they also offered strong proof that dark energy is the root cause of this. They found that the expansion of various superclusters of galaxies was being slowed down by dark energy. It's possible to forecast the immediate future rather well. The sun will transition into a red giant phase in five billion years. Sadly, it will devour the Earth in no more than two billion years after that. Subsequently, the impact of dark energy's relative strength and its potential time variation becomes significant. The more remarkable and faster the dark energy's repulsive force, the greater the probability that the universe will undergo a big rip. To put it simply, the Big Rip is a result of dark energy's ability to subdue gravity and everything else, tearing apart bodies that are gravitationally bound like our local supercluster, our Milky Way galaxy, our solar system, and eventually ourselves, and leaving behind probably solitary patches of vacuum. The approaching heat death of the universe is a more pressing concern. In 100 million years, the universe will have expanded to the point where galaxies beyond our local group will no longer be visible. Following this, the star formation will cease for a billion to one trillion years due to the exhaustion of gas reserves. Although stars will continue to shine, 
they will eventually deplete their fuel in approximately 120 trillion years. At that stage, only stellar remnants such as white dwarfs, black holes and neutron stars will remain. Most of these remnants will be consumed by the supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies within 100 quintillion years. In the distant future, the universe will progressively become quieter and darker until almost nothing happens. The fate of the universe depends on the rate at which matter decays. Over time, protons, neutrons and electrons are predicted to break down into subatomic particles spontaneously. This process is expected to result in the disappearance of all ordinary matter in approximately 1,040 years, leaving behind only black holes. After about 10,100 years, even these black holes will vanish. Now, let's rewind and get a summary of the events that truly set everything into motion. Heat death could be the end of the universe. Stars, once bright and full of life, could one day dim and fade away, leaving behind a silent, cold cosmos. This deadly scenario, known as heat death, is where the universe runs out of thermodynamic free energy to sustain motion or life, reaching maximum entropy. It's based on the second law of thermodynamics, which says entropy tends to increase. The concept, which started with William Thompson, aka Lord Kelvin, in the 1850s, has evolved with contributions from scientists like Sadie Carnot and James Joule, emphasizing the gradual energy loss in the universe. If the cosmos continues expanding, it might reach a state where it can no longer sustain any form of life or motion, marking the true end. So, what do you think? Will heat death or the big rip spell the end for sentient life? Share your thoughts in the comments.